So if you want to grow your own chestnut trees, it's, it's not very hard at all. Uh, I grow uh, over a thousand every year and um, I get close to 100% germination on the seeds. Uh, but when I first started, I ran into lots of problems. So uh, the biggest thing is you have to store the seeds over the winter without having them sprout too early, get moldy, or get eaten by rodents. And I tried a lot of different ways to do that. Um, I used to put them in bags in the fridge and it almost always would either get mold after a couple months or I would get uh, them sprouting in February. And then it's way too cold to plant then. So that didn't work out. And then uh, I tried storing them outside and the mice would just hammer them. So then uh, now I came up with this bucket method and what we did was we took five gallon pails and we dug a hole the size of the bucket and and then before we put the bucket in we actually cut the bottom of the bucket out and replaced it with hardware cloth so the whole bucket can drain really well and then we uh, packed the whole bucket full of uh, sawdust and chestnuts and the sawdust is a really nice medium it keeps the chestnuts moist keeps them from drying out um, I've also used sand that works really well the most important thing is that it drains really well and that the nuts don't dry out. So I just keep it all pressed in. This is actually a mixture of probably 70% chestnuts and 30% sawdust. Uh, so there's more chestnuts than sawdust in here. And you can get quite a few nuts in a five gallon bucket. You could bury a one gallon bucket if you just want to do a few. And then uh, the lid snaps shut, or it's supposed to. And uh, I usually put a big rock on it and then just to help keep the mice out and then I'll mulch all the buckets really thickly with uh, leaves before the end of the year. I might put the mulch this thick and it won't even freeze under that and if it does it's not really a big deal. One last thing about storing the seed is uh, it stays here all winter and then as soon as the ground thaws out and as soon as I can start planting I don't waste any time. I uh, open up the bucket and I pull the nuts out. Some of them will have been sprouting and some not, but I just plant all of them as soon as I can. Um, if the sprouts get more than an inch long, they often get damaged by uh, just being broken. And so it's nice if it's a really, really short sprout or not sprouted yet. So I try to plant them right away. Uh, and we're going to go check out what happens when we plant them in the nursery beds right now. All right, we're here in the nursery. Uh, this is where everything gets started. This is where the magic really happens in my mind. So th this is a bed of chestnut seedlings. These were all started this spring. Right now it's October, the nuts are starting to fall. Um, it's been a really, really warm season. Uh, we have not had any cold weather to speak of. Uh, normally things are starting to go dormant now, but it's been so warm that they're not. Um, but this is a, uh, one chestnut tree and there's about uh, 220 in this bed and another uh, almost 200 in the bed behind me. Um, you can see some of the trees get quite big. They're pretty close together. I plant the nuts in the spring in a uh, row. Uh, each row is only about a hand's width apart and the nuts are maybe an inch apart and the trees do fine with that. Some of them are almost four feet high uh, but more typical an average tree will be 18 inches or two feet and when I uh, first started I didn't get trees this big but we've really built up the soil here and uh, really really feed the biology in the soil. We keep all the weeds down we put a lot of work into this and it's really satisfying to just have a small little space like this which it might fit you know six tomato plants or 200 chestnut trees so um, anyway that's what we've done with this little bed here. All right, so once these trees start to go dormant in another few weeks, once they lose their leaves, I'm gonna come in here with a shovel and dig them right up. They come up really easy because the soil is so loose. We usually don't damage hardly any roots at all. Uh, it's almost like pulling a carrot right out of the garden. And um, once they come up, then they're ready to send out to people. I love to plant trees when they're dormant. I don't like to plant trees when they have leaves or fruit or flowers on them. So we'll wait till they're sleeping and then we'll be moving them out of here off to a wider spacing than this. Awesome.
So the last bed of chestnuts was just chestnuts. Uh, over in this area, we have a lot more trees growing and a lot of them are mixed together. So I'll just uh, show you what it looks like if you don't want to grow just 200 chestnuts, but you want to mix things together, it can still work out pretty well. Um, so, so right here, uh, this soil is crazy deep here. Uh, there's been a lot of cow manure deposited here um, and the chestnuts put on just amazing growth. Uh, this is all started from seed this year, um, just one year seedlings and these are mixed in with some mulberry seedlings and some black locust uh, root cuttings that I started. This is all started this season. These are all one year old trees. Um, we have really fertile soil that we've put so much into um, but some of the trees are doing really well even when they're totally mixed in. So if you look underneath this locust, you can find another chestnut tree. Here's a, here's a plum tree actually. Here's another chestnut. And they're all just mixed in together. The black locust is a nitrogen fixing plant, which uh, if you're just growing a lot of trees, it'd be almost like sowing a crop of clover. It's pretty cool and you get a, a tree out of it. So. Anyways, this is a mixed bed of chestnuts, locusts, and mulberries with a few other odds and ends like persimmons and plums mixed in. So it doesn't have to be pure blocks of anything. Um, 